They say that melees are more powerful. And you know what? They're right. At least for the time being, they're right. But I'll tell you what, I never met a melee that is as satisfying to use as the Tenora Prime. And today, my friends, we're going to be diving deeper into this primary weapon. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable that newer Tenno should be able to build, or partially build at least. But of course, we also got the quote-unquote endgame set up with a Riven and everything. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player approach. I'm going to be taking my time and explaining whatever I feel is necessary for newer players. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tenora Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. I'll humbly ask you guys to excuse the voice, I'm feeling just a little bit under the weather. But the Tenora is an absolutely outstanding weapon and I could not wait to review it. Now this is the best impersonation of a minigun you will find in Warframe, when it comes to primaries, when it comes to arc guns we gotta talk about the mouse salon, but more on that, some other time. This is a hit scan weapon, it has a bit of a spool up to it and as you can see the frontal barrel of the weapon spins around, you get more fire rate and more accuracy. So to review the 15 meter test, it goes something, well 15 meters here, like this. At the start of the fire, your bullets are all over the place but the more you fire the more fire rate you get and after about 2 seconds you reached full fire rate and full accuracy. Take a look at that, pinpoint accurate for the most part. Being a hit scan attack is also very easy to use, there is basically no recoil on the weapon after it stabilizes. It starts off a little bit jumpy, because again the whole mythos of the minigun thing, but when it reaches full fire rate after about 2 seconds, it's steady as a rock. And the magazine is absolutely huge, even though the reload is a tad on the lengthy side. Now let's hop on into a comparison between the Tenora Prime and the standard Tenora to see what are the differences between Prime the normal. Is it worth building the Prime or not, essentially? Accuracy is gonna remain the same, but keep in mind that this 12.5 represents the accuracy of the weapon when it's not fully spooled up and all whatnot. Higher critical chance, 2% extra, higher critical multiplier, 0.2 extra. And I know that this might not seem like a lot because it's not a lot, but it's still something sort of significant. Higher fire rate 12.67 instead of 11.67 and perhaps one of the biggest buffs 200 bullets instead of 150 bullets. The one issue I have with this whole prime thing going down is they didn't touch the reload. It's still 2.5 seconds, it's still on the lengthy side, they could have brought it down to at least a 2.2. Status chance went up to 24% and this was a really really needed buff on the tenor, especially considering the current meta, so we got another 8% and status. When it comes to damage, it's a straight upgrade, about 15%, from 24 to 28, and you will notice that this carries over to the secondary fire of the Tenora as well, which I will showcase in just a minute. Accuracy the same as before, a charge rate of 0.8, a critical chance of 40%, up from 34%, and the same critical multiplier of 3.0x. Now the magazine again, 200 and keep in mind that the secondary fire on the Tenora still consumes 10 ammo, a punch through of by default of 1 meter. Now 1 meter is not a whole lot but it's still better than nothing. A reload of 2 seconds as before, reload does not change. 20% status chance instead of 11% and I believe this to be a slight issue considering how many rods and how fast you put them into your enemies this should have been at least a 30-ish percent if you ask me. And when it comes to the damage again a straight upgrade about 15-ish percent 280 instead of 240. Now I left the secondary fire at the end because I want to highlight the following issue. This would be a fantastic Eidolon hunting weapon. And don't get me wrong, it still is. You can hunt Eidolon all day long if that's what you want with the Tenora Prime. And you will do great. But it has one problem that I keep pointing out. You cannot hold the secondary fire in. If you press secondary fire, the weapon begins a charge up. Then it releases a metal rod of sorts. This is a hit scan attack. It does a truck and a half worth of damage. As you saw there, it has higher critical chance and critical damage, but there is no way for me to hold in the shot. And that's a bit of an issue. If you could hold that in like the Lanka, for example, that would be absolutely insane. But as it is, it's still cool. Definitely, it still packs a punch. And keep in mind, it does consume 10 ammo per shot. 
Now, let's talk about builds and all whatnot. Mod capacity, of course, 60 out of 60. As soon as you build a Tenora Prime, you're gonna get 30 out of 30, unless you buy it with money or with plat. Then you're gonna get it straight to 60 with an Auto King Catalyst already installed. From my humble point of view, the uh, Tenora Prime is fully worth building out with Forma, Catalyst, everything, essentially. This one costs 20 plat to have one installed. You can grind one from Nightwave. You can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie. My weapon has been formed a total of four times. The Tenora Prime comes with two default polarity, two V symbols, and also the Exilus mod slot is with a V symbol. You probably noticed that I left this one locked. Why is that? Take a look. Do you see the message? Purchase additional appearance config slot for this item for 10 plat. I have the weapon Exilus adapter already built, a couple of them actually. But unfortunately, it says this. I, I don't know. The E help that said you don't need to unlock this one if you are familiar with my existing tenora build you know that it's pointless to unlock this one what are you gonna plug into it there's no recall on it you can go stabilizer it's even more steady but it's steady enough as it is guided ordnance doesn't actually provide a benefit not a palpable one at least vigilante supplies Okay, you can go for this one, but you can drop a bat or use carrier or whatever else. It's not really worth using this one. And you might say, hey, set bonus. Set bonus you can get from your little sentinel's weapon. Now, one more time, I will showcase how Gaiden or... By the way, look, you try again, template for appearance. I don't know why it does. I want to show you the effect of heavy caliber on this weapon because you are not to use it. It destroys the accuracy even at full fire rate. And I will show you the difference like I showed you in the normal tenor of it. So this will be 30 meters to the target, right? I want you to take a look at the accuracy right now. Yeah? Now let's put on guided ordnance and hit some targets so you can see the effect. Some players believe that this should have an effect and, well, they're right, it should have a bloody effect, but it doesn't. It would be good for the weapon Excel slot if it did have an effect, though. So bear that one in mind. So let's hit a target. I got my buff, you see it. Here's the accuracy. It's the same as before. It's the exact same bloody thing as before. So that 30% unfortunately do either doesn't have an impact by the looks of things or simply does not have a strong enough impact on the weapon. And if I was to remove everything and show you the accuracy one more time from 30 meters. Wait, that's great. Full pull up. Look at that. That's pinpoint accuracy. Right there. So do not use heavy caliber and unfortunately guided ordnance still doesn't do anything noticeable on the weapon. And with that out of the way, my friends, let's talk about Riven Disposition. <sighs> I... This position is set to one because it's a brand new weapon. And this is DE's policy. Dear developer, if you're listening, can we at least have two out of five at the very least? Because as it is right now, all the people which are passionate about their weapons, which want to max them out because they have... Nothing else they rather do, right? And buy ribbons and all whatnot. It's very difficult to get a ribbon that is worth slotting on the weapon with such a low dispo. The normal Tenora has 3 out of 5. That's a different cuddle of fish. Is it worth buying a ribbon for the Tenora Prime? No, definitely not. If we had at least 2, then we can talk about it. It can still be beneficial if you manage to get the correct roll, which will set you back a fair number of plat. Now let's have a look at a standard build. And we got damage serration, multi shot with split chamber, critical chance, and critical damage with point strike, vital sense. And of course, what do you know? Hunter Munition is here with the 260 60 vital mods, rhyme rounds, and malignant force. This, my friends, is a standard build for primary weapons which have a good amount of critical chance right now in Warframe. We're also going to be trying a corrosive setup as well. Because Vital, if you're heading down to Deimos, for example, isn't really going to do you all that good. This is your option slot. I'm going to be going initially with Shred. Shred is the best of both worlds on the Tenora. You get some fire rate because, let's keep in mind, I do have a huge magazine. I wouldn't overdo it with fire rate because at the end of the day you're gonna be bumping into that 2.5 second reload a whole lot more often. Which trust me is simply annoying when you and then you go to the 2.5 seconds. So you might wanna try for your own peace of mind Prime Fast Hands. Or normal fast hands, whatever you guys want. Uh, Tainted Magnum, not really. Don't go with this one. I know it's a luring for the 66% magazine capacity, but it's gonna kill your reload. Now, my friends, we're going to be testing out the weapon like so, and then we're going to try a couple of variations here and there. I got a lot of punch through from Shred. 
And yes, there is a uh, Prime variant to Shred, Prime Shred, but unfortunately, let's be honest, not a whole lot of newer Tenno have Prime Shred. So initially, we're just gonna test with the normal version. Come on. If you're an Elite Tenno and you already have your Prime Shred, just slap it on and be done with it. It's just simply gonna be better. Level 120, Corrupted and Guns. Take a look at that. <laughs> Annihilated. Absolutely blown to bits. I ah, loves it. Oh man, shooting guns always makes me feel better. You can also try the secondary fire rate. As you can see, it's a one shot on the target. 13.7 bleed, one vital proc, and one bleed proc. It was enough. But the planets need to align when it comes to the secondary. Look at that, they aligned. Thanks, planets. Laser loves ya. Of course, the primary fire is a whole lot more reliable. You just rat a tat tat tat. -tat. And I wouldn't stop firing from target to target simply because I don't want to lose the accuracy depending on the distance between you and your target. And of course you can always finish off one of your targets with the secondary fire, just blow them to bits like that. Honestly, playing with the Tenora, what, so I use 260 bullets, something like that. Just for my own statistics. Honestly, using the Tenora is a very gratifying and satisfying experience. It's a minigun, it feels impactful, the rat -a -tat, tat 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 you, you feel it in your headphones or in your speakers. It's very well done on the sound part of things. I love this weapon, it's absolutely amazing. And of course, I highly recommend it. That kind of performance with a standard build, from my point of view, is definitely something you should keep in mind. Now, as I said before, this is not your only option. If we're going with corrosive, hunter munitions doesn't seem much of a point anymore. Without vital to increase the value of the slashes that we obtain from hunter munitions and from the weapons of slash value, it's not really worth it. The slashes will be feeble at best. So we're gonna go like so, we're gonna put the electricity mod on. This one is called high voltage, it's obtained... Is this one the one farmable? Yes, this one and Shellshock are farmable from the mission Na Elgar, Planet Iris, you gotta find all the free secret caches, then on extraction you got a 5% chance at this one and Shellshock. Unfortunately, the grind can be extremely grueling, unless you're super lucky. Battle here brings the 60-60 electricity mods once every couple of months. When you see him do that, make sure you have a copy at least of Voltaic Strike and Jolt, because those two are not farmable from the game. And you can also buy it from the trade chat, if you're impatient and you has plat, cause daddy has plat. Now, in the final slot, I can do something smart, like go with multi-shot, you know. Another smart choice is to go with a 60-60 heat mod, and I can go corrosive heat, and that's definitely a good idea right now, because heat in Warframe is the most powerful single element you can have. So we're gonna go like so, I got a little bit of punch through, a little bit of fire rate. Remember when I told you not to overdo it with the fire rate? What if we were, hmm? This is not overdoing it, this is my favorite fire rate mod in Warframe right now. It's called Vile Acceleration, my friends. 90% fire rate at the cost of 15% damage. It's important to understand that that 15% minus applies to your serration or your heavy caliber if you chose to go that route. It's not that big of a deal, and if you don't know how to farm corrupted mods, such as heavy caliber or Vile Acceleration, look at the cards right now. Now we're gonna test this one out, uh, make sure I have the right combination though, it's good, it's good, heat and corrosive on the weapon. And if you think this is overdoing it with fire rate, wait, <laughs> I still have one more trick to show you. Well, level 120, corrupted heavy goods, oh yeah, mama yes, so good, harder, faster, stronger, better, better. It's better as a feel, my friends, it's not better from an efficiency perspective. Definitely not. It feels better. It's nice to shoot a thousand bullets into a target. This is Warframe. It's what it's based on. Destroying scores upon scores of enemies with your awesomeness. And this is definitely awesome to use. So consider a build such as this. Now remember when I said this is not overdoing it with fire rate? What if we were to overdo it just a little bit? Not to the point where it and the magazine is gone. That's pointless because it's annoying to reload that often. But what if we renounce Fermite Rounds and we go for even more fire rate and this time I'm gonna bring the Prime mod out, Prime Shred, 55%, 90%, plus the 2.2 meters which worth of punch room, goes to 3.2 on the secondary fire rate if you think about it. I also wanna show you this time how fast I can actually spam my secondary fire. Look at that. The recoil is a bit kicky. So actually in this case, if you want to use it like a sniper like that and you don't want it to kick, perhaps lowering the recoil with the weapon XL slot might be a good idea. But other than that... How's that? 
Not as efficient? Perhaps not, but it feels damn great, my friends. And this being a critical, critical weapon, remember that it's vital to go for a headshot. Okay, maybe not vital, maybe I exaggerate a little bit, but it's very important because of the bonus headshot multiplier. Link the cards right now if you still don't understand fully how critical chance and critical damage applies in Warframe. You might think it's pretty straightforward, but trust me when I say it's not really all that straightforward, and this is one of the reasons I love Warframe. All these cool mechanics that they got and they used to take advantage of. There's still one more thing which I do want to show you guys, a Riven setup. Once again, I would like to highlight the fact that I do not recommend Riven mods for a Dispo 1 weapon. It's simply silly. You're gonna knock yourself out trying to find a worthwhile Riven. Oh, one mod that I did forget to recommend. If you're a crit person, like I am a crit person, just because you pretty numbers on the screen, we're gonna go with additional crit chance of Argon Scope. It used to be very expensive from the Acolyte event, but nowadays all you gotta do to get Argon Scope is um, head on over to Deimos and do a couple of bounties, or you can buy it from the trade chat. It's not expensive at all, and this is just if you want some crit. Don't get me wrong, it's not one of the most powerful mods necessarily, but it does make a good pairing with Hunter Munitions, right? More crits, more slashes, more efficiency out of your bullets. But if you just want pretty numbers like this, you can go for an approach such as that. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Back to Riven mods. What would be an ideal Tenora Riven with a dispo of 1? <sighs> That's a little bit difficult to say, but I'm gonna showcase this one. Critical chance, critical damage, minus reload speed. Why? That negative is definitely not harmless. It's a 2.9 second reload now. For example, let's say if you guys had a Riven that offered you some cold or some toxin, the toxin in a setup such as this with Hunter Munitions, what you could have done is drop one of the 60-60 mods, but keep in mind that in dropping one of the 60-60 mods, you also drop some very important status chance, yes, right now in Warframe, and you could put on some fire rate, or maybe Prime Shred would punch through and fire rate, so bear that one in mind. It's not really worth it, but it wouldn't really be one of my normal reviews for Prime weapons if we don't have a Riven as well. Will it make a difference? Yeah, but not a big difference. Just a couple of bullets. Just a couple of bullets. If we reduce the fire rate, however, there are advantages to that because, let's be honest, when you have a super high fire rate on the weapon, you might lose some of your bullets. Look at that, beautiful. Two slashes, one by you're not gonna be very efficient at actually getting the most out of those bullets because some will simply land in the wrong spot or go off the target, right? So having a decent, a normal fire rate, such as this one, which was not amplified, this is the default 12.67 fully spooled up on the weapon, will mean a lot more bullet efficiency. I don't care about bullet efficiency because I can do this. It's not expensive, they're easy to make, you can make 100 pads at a time. Get the blueprint from your dojo. But again, it should be said, for bullet efficiency, you don't need to go fire it. It's just something that I... It's enjoyable to do. And it's about fun at the end of the day, in video game, if I remember correctly. Now we're gonna talk about Warframe buffs, and for that we're gonna be using the lovely Mirage Prime. For a weapon that already has crit, you don't necessarily wanna go with Harrow. Mirage is still the best weapon buffer frame in Warframe. We're gonna go with Corrosive Projection against heavily armored targets. It's not mandatory by any stretch of the imagination. You can simply slap on something like, I don't know, Energy Siphon, if that's what your build calls for. If you're more comfortable with something like Growing Power or, uh, I don't know, Loot Detector, simply go for the aura of your choosing. You have an option to pump up the value or the efficiency of your aura if you go for Co-Action Drift. Co-Action Drift is an excellent slot, by the way. 15% aura strength and 15% aura effectiveness. When it comes to Arcanes, we're gonna be using two R5s from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. This one is called Arcane Rage. On headshot, a 15% chance for a massive 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. Definitely worth picking up this one. Arcane Avenger, on the other hand, from my subjective point of view, is the most powerful offensive Arcane in Warframe right now. This one on damage, a 21% chance for plus 45% crit chance for 12 seconds, right? It applies to your primary melee and to your secondary as well you gotta get yourself this one and if you still feel intimidated by idol hunts and by all intents and purposes you shouldn't you can buy them from the trade chat prices are steadily going down as idol on hunting becomes more and more mainstream you can also use a little sentinel to pump up the power of your primary weapon we're gonna be going with carrier prime but it doesn't really matter which you choose just make sure that on that sentinel's weapon you have the four vigilante mods offense supplies 
Fervor and Armament. You're gonna be getting yourself that 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. It's not straight critical chance, not even if your weapon has 100%, the mechanic works slightly different, but it's definitely a buff you wanna have instead of like not having. If your little sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will still retain said buff. Now for the final test, the fun one, we're gonna pump up the level to 155, unpause the target so they can hit me and I can get my glorious, ever so glorious buffs. We're gonna activate Empower on Mirage and then her free ability. Oh, did not unpause targets. Hold on. Take two. I'm just not gonna cut here at all. Unpause the target so they can hit me and I can get my buffs. And of course her ever so lovely Empower first. Hello best animation in Warframe. Now, if I go for a single shot to the headshot, I'm absolutely gonna annihilate these targets. I'm using the secondary fire right now, but I don't need to. Look. This is what you call clearing house. I'm not even gonna stop. I don't wanna stop. I'm gonna shoot this wall. I'm gonna make a nice little heart on the wall because I have nothing better to do with my bullets. You know why? They're dead already. That's what Mirage can do with a absolutely glorious weapon, such as the Tenora. My friends, I cannot state how awesome to play with this weapon is. Honestly, I know it's subjective, what's fun for me might not be fun for you and vice versa, but at the end of the day, this is a fantastic weapon. It's extremely efficient. It can basically mow down scores upon scores of high-level enemies. And once again, I highly recommend it. As always, my name is Malaysar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any feedback for me, by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. Once again, I would like to apologize for my voice. I'll try to do better next time. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.